Hello folks, welcome to another Bitcoin market analysis by Inspo Crypto. Today, once again, a very exciting day. As you can see what Bitcoin loves to do without any retest. The retest is happening right now, so we need to be extremely careful from here. Because if its retest is going to be solid, usually it should bounce here and go up. I was missing it. So I was hatching here once again, long short, didn't close my short just because I was missing my retest. And usual, that's a very simple rule. If they don't make any retest, it's usually just a fake. When they do a retest, then be careful. And it seems they are retesting right now. So then we need to be careful because that could be a signal that we will go even more up afterwards. So really we need to be extremely careful from here in my opinion. Um, we need to see of course what DXY is going to do. I was expecting all the time a push up by DXY. I mean today's data the PCE a little bit higher than expected, bearish because it gives, of course, the Fed or it's confirming the Fed, hey, if you are hawkish, it's absolutely fine because economy looks strong, inflation is still not under control. So yes, of course, you know, let us bring more pain to the markets. So I would expect for the next FOMC, uh, 75 bps uh, they will be aggressive once again last time they had the opportunity to hike their rate less and i would say between 75 bps and 100 bps could be uh, part of the next fomc decision of course we need to see nobody knows exactly but it looks like so you know well, um, something else we can talk about. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, we had a, a lot, a lot of uh, news related to the geopolitical stage. We know that uh, the referendums in Donbass and some parts of uh, the Ukraine are done. And it seems today, if I'm right, is... Putin and the Kremlin are going to announce that this kind or these territories will be part of the Russian Federation in future. At the same time, what a coincidence, is Zelensky signing its official application to the NATO. Wow, what a great news from both sides indicating us we are now not one, not two, not three, even four steps forward to go to a World War Three. Ah, that's so incredible, nice. Well, however, uh, ah, just to make it clear, if you are asking, is that bullish inspo? Ah, uh, World War Three. let me think. If you are investing money in gold and crude oil, yes. If you are investing money in equities, it's bullish, yes. Like, you would jump front of a train, for example. Uh, no, I wouldn't consider that a very bullish. And I think that if the markets are still following what the Fed is doing, wow, if they start to declare, it doesn't matter what part is going to do it. They were officially because Russia is still saying it's a military operation. It's not a war. Ukraine and the Western are saying that's a war without declaration, but it doesn't matter. However, if we go one step further, and in my opinion, after today's announcements, it's going to happen, we will have a declaration of war. And then, wow, train, jump, Mm-hmm, that's going to happen in my opinion. So we will see. Um, 
how the markets will react in the next few days and weeks. I think October could be also bearish. You know that I'm still expecting until end of the year a bullish price action. Of course, I don't have a crystal ball. If they are going to declare war, if the whole uh, conflict is, go is going to escalate, <laughs> bullish? Never, no way. Uh, we will have tough times then. And uh, well, at least I will change. Inspo is not going to analyze any markets anymore. I will take then my mobile phone and just, you know, take my car and, and show you Europe under fire. <laughs> Because that's going to happen next. I mean, Uh, that sounds so unrealistic for me, but yeah, it is on the table. Unfortunately, everything is on the table at the moment. German Air Force making drills uh, in Japan. I mean, I received the info today and I was really surprised. What? German Air Force in the Pacific making drills? In Japanese air? What? Does that make sense? Of course not. Only if you are making some trainings, drills to prepare some scenarios. Well, let us go forward. And it seems Bitcoin is not failing once again. Uh, it's, it's really trying um, just to retest and not to break, but it looks like it's going to break. Uh, everything will depend a little bit on DXY, but it doesn't look great at the moment. However, we have a mission and the mission is we go forward and check the wealth ratio and so on and so forth. I'm still thinking if I have something uh, to tell you, but no, no, only inflation, uh, uh, but you know, that's peanuts. If we talked about World War Three and so on and so forth, so uh, I don't care anymore. So let us go forward. Weight ratio, 30 days, moving average, lifting up. Well, I mean, 56% yesterday, it's indicating they were preparing something and it seems uh, this weekend could be at least I'm not going to stop to hedge, uh, really not. In my opinion, the only way to make money in this market is only hedging, only, only because 85 to 90% of the whole time we are just running sideways, always. Less sharp price moves. It's the best way to do money here is to hedge. Long, short, at the same time. When you are up, close your long, take the money, put more funds to your short, let us go down, start a new long, and so on and so forth. That's the only opportunity um, to reduce the risk and at the same time don't to miss in case it happens a big sharp price move. So yeah, at the moment everything indicates a little bit sell pressure is going to come. So usually delayed and matches very well to the weekend. So we need to go forward and check what the weights ratio 30 hours moving average is doing so um brand brand new stoltenberg the chair of the nato said right now we can't accept ukraine at the moment what well doesn't matter also that does matter because i guess they know very well if they go this step No way you can reverse that. No way. So, yeah, sad, to be honest, very sad for the Ukraines. But not surprising me. That's the NATO. Welcome. So, yeah. Whew. 
what a hot day. Um, let us check. So what we see here is, you remember I said, mm, we need to be careful because once again, it dumped, uh, usually with delay, I guess, and we will see that it matches very well to what happened last time, but you know, we don't have the crystal ball. The only thing we are doing here is to analyze the market. So what happened? You remember that here? What happened afterwards? Right. Do you see what's happening once again? Right. And you remember what happened afterwards? Right. So, uh, waste ratio 30 hours moving average lifting up here once again. Very quick. Very, very quick. Looks a little bit spontaneous, the whole thing, but the flow activity is going to be very exciting um, today. Um, I, to be honest, I didn't spend a lot of time um, just front of the screens because of my job and it surprised me because pff, that was so obvious. Stablecoin supply reducing and right now also here reducing stablecoin reserves on centralized exchanges could also indicate it's done. We will go down afterwards and it matches very well to what FTX and Bitfinex was doing. So also here, weights ratio 30 hours moving average still lifting up. So we need to see. Look that. Look that. We had a very, very volatile days last week. You remember, and we had big activity. Now look this activity. And the thing is, we are maintaining a price below of 20k. I think some people are getting nervous. So, you remember last time. We had here, sorry, we had, oh, I need to disable, yeah, now it's better. We had here almost 4,000 bitcoins. Afterwards, we left it up. We had here yesterday evening almost 3,400 Bitcoin. Oh, surprise, surprise. We are lifting up once again. What are these guys doing? I can tell you what this are, these guys are doing. They are still distributing. Every time they use a pump and dump, they distribute even more than before. Is that bullish? Yeah. If you jump front of the train, that's also bullish. It's not. It's bearish. It's really bearish. And I don't get why these guys are doing it at 20k and less. But I know that these guys accumulated at a price of four to five thousand dollars. So they don't care. They are doing gain every time. And even every time they push up at 19k and sell at 20k, it's more profit for them. So it's great. Why they are shorting, longing, whatever. So it's a cash cow. That's really a cash cow. So it happened once again, exactly the same. Just a little bit delayed. That's the only thing. This time here it was, well, really close before they started to pump up. And here, once again, they stopped to demand. That's why the price dumped, like it happened here as well, before it went up. And here once again, and just to dump. <sighs> what should I say? It's it's crazy, but it is what it is. So um, another thing that changed a little bit is if we check, for example, here we have seen, uh, like just also here before, we received some stable coins, nothing big. So we did here, we generated much more volume uh, for these three candles than here because it was just two candles. And this one was big, really big, but that's it. So they sold and the stablecoin supply is still uh, declining just because they are once again uh, taking out Bitcoins from Binance. And so, you know, that's what we have at the moment. So it's it's not bullish at all. At the moment, um, another 720 Bitcoins arriving. So we had 1,500 Bitcoins in the last two hours. 
not big, but you know, they use, they, they accumulate and then they make such pump and dump. And last year in summer, because many of you are sometimes are asking, but inspo, could you make a video? What is the difference between now and last year? I can tell you. Last year we had a lot of fake rallies, a lot. But every time when we had a fake rally, they purchased more Bitcoin than they sold. Now we are generating fake rallies to distribute even more than to buy. And that's the big difference. And that's why I still think, wow, we are not over. Even I still don't expect any big new low, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. I can't tell you that. Maybe I'm really so wrong and we will be at 14k Monday. I don't know at all. I mean, my my expectations are without, without a potential big black swan event like war declaration or whatever in Ukraine or in Serbia or it doesn't matter. But if we have such a black swan event, of course, we can go even lower. 10K, 12K, that's, that would be my bottom. Still don't think we will see such a black swan um, event this year. Even I have to recognize we are coming very close to it, very close at the moment. So futures, what's happening here? Well, first of all, <laughs> I mean, look the funding rate. That's incredible. Um, I mentioned many times when that happens. Usually afterwards, we have such a pump and dump. Why? Well, be in my opinion, because of exchanges. So. Uh, when exchanges know, and they know because they see the inflows, outflows, inflows, and so on and so forth, so they, they know very well what's going to happen next. When they know that, they are not going to allow that you are going to take profit with your short. So the first thing they do is to wreck you, to liquidate you. And afterwards, yeah, then it's fine because less people will take profit then. So what we see here is that the funding rate was declining all the time while open interest, look, pushed up and leverage ratio too, pushed up very hard. We had here close before the pump, a big stablecoin inflow to derivative exchanges. And at the same time, oh, look, very strange, isn't it? A big Bitcoin outflows from derivative exchanges. And when I'm saying big, I'm talking about oh, 37,000 Bitcoins bit. <laughs> That's incredible. But yeah, it is what it is. So they started here. You remember 8,737, blah, blah, blah. We had here, all, I don't know. So someone big were just using all these paths here to long, to short, to long, to short all the time. And just as you see, at the same time, they withdraw all the Bitcoins. And I mean, 37,000. That's crazy. That's just crazy. But yeah. You know, that's what we see at the moment. Uh, we need to see how much they liquidate it because they liquidated. No, once again, not that big. Let us check and refresh the site. Maybe we have a much updated data. Well, I tried, but unfortunately not. We just see that they liquidated almost 370 Bitcoins. That's nothing, peanuts, but it's, you know, the biggest one was last time that was almost the double. That was almost same, uh, 700 Bitcoins. Um, so they liquidated first, as mentioned, close before. That's always that, that's what pump and dump groups do. So when they start, when they stop to to demand the whole supply, so the price uh, dump once and then they push up. That's 
pump and pump and lump group style. And that's what they did. At the same time, open interest and leverage ratio rising hard while the funding rate was declining. So also here, shake out operation in my opinion. Binance, let us see if we can refresh also this side here. That would be great if we could. So let us take a look and yeah, well, it's almost well different on Binance. For example, <laughs> the funding rate was positive, indicating there were here just demanding more longs than shorts. That's a different to the aggregated funding rate where it was declining. Isn't that interesting? Uh, you remember uh, in my, well, I, I didn't tweet that. I, I commented it. Bitfinex FTX was dumping spot while Binance was pushing up spot very hard. And PERP, so Bitcoin collateral and stablecoin futures were declining. Also here indicating they were buying shorts. And well, um, it seems it was just a Binance operation. I don't know why. We will see if the market maker um, was involved here. Something I didn't, as you see, all, all pages uh, were closed all the time. So I, I really didn't spend any time today with, with the charts, unfortunately. It was a very busy Friday. So, 50-50. Uh, a little bit more shorts, but 50-50. And that's that's crazy. Uh, we have more longs on Ethereum than, than shorts. So, uh, we need to see. I mean, at the moment, it seems that Bitcoin is bouncing. Oh, we can check. Yeah, it's bouncing here. Um... So if they are going to confirm that breakout and that's what they are doing, we can go up. We can go up. So, okay, 50-50, it's healthy. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen next. If we check the Kingfisher liquidation map, we see here the longs, here the shorts. We will see if that matches to FTX. So, bu, 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 bu. Bu, 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 bu. and no, at least we can see we have more liquidation, so that lifted up, and we also see, for example, this here. This here is not part of Binance structure. That looks similar from the structure because we have the gap here, we have the gap here, we have also a gap here. So usually I would say just the volume in, in liquidations is less. That's the only thing. But we have two bulls indicated here, it seems, on FTX. Interesting. So let us go forward. So we can see what happened here. You remember, look, does that make sense? What stupid thing is that? FTX was distributing all the time. Binance started to buy here. The price reacted. Afterwards, Binance starts to dump and FTX starts to buy. Uh, did I miss something? CZ and Sam just trading in the same room or something, drinking a beer. I don't know. I didn't say beer. I said beer. Just to make it clear. Okay. Um, Okay, great. I mean, look that. That's that's crazy. Uh, Bitcoin collateral, uh, Bitcoin collateral futures, just indicating, like Binance bought what the price has to do. Pfft, 
it's crazy it is it is really but yeah right now you know even here volume declining once again i would be extremely careful it looks like a little bit um, we will maintain that level a little bit that's not be it's not going to be part of my because usually when they retest and confirm the breakout we should go up that's not happening so hmm. binance you can see i mean pff, binance due its liquidity and of course also due its um volume just the main aggregated spot driver here also here i mean that's what bitfinex was doing and did exactly well not exactly just different distributed until here while binance was starting to buy then binance started to decline and these guys delayed started to lift up also interesting what bitfinex is doing sometimes i really don't get what these guys are doing well, in Coinbase, what is Coinbase doing? I mean, they love to do it. Also here, just, you know, delayed, really delayed. They started here, even later than Binance once again. But however, also here, it looks, I could imagine that someone who is trading on Coinbase used Binance to, of course, the opportunity to long short because coinbase doesn't have any future market so because it looks very accurate what coinbase and binance did very accurate let us check what entities are doing retailers of course buying like no tomorrow this guy is here not doing anything this guy is there oh declining so i would say just based on that, at least wallets with less than 100 bitcoins. Mm, not convinced, not 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 big at least, or used uh, the uh, rising price to distribute a little bit. This guy's here since yesterday, nothing, just not doing anything. This guy surprised me. 30,000 bitcoins. That's incredible. Do you know? 30,000 Bitcoins here would, <laughs> would go up like hell, but these guys are so big, 30,000 Bitcoins looks like peanuts. And we know what they love to do with all these quick accumulated Bitcoins. That's what they did just before, always like here or like here or here we check oh that doesn't look great yeah but that's that's what they really love to do that's really what they love to do is um, to accumulate quick and to dump with that I don't know why it seems that's just a strategy they have and they make money with long shorts and I, in my opinion 30,000 Bitcoins matches extremely well. I mean, we are talking here about the last two days. But it would match extremely well to these 30,000 Bitcoins we have seen on derivative exchanges. I mean, all also here, for example, these entities are mostly linked to exchanges declining balance it's not that bad but just because they are taking over from here and if we check for example that's also very interesting that happened also in the last two days so yeah it seems they are shifting bitcoins from one to the other so very interesting now we can see i really don't know i didn't check the fund flows of different btc entities that's something we are going to do now if crypto quant is going to show us that and 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 yes 
So what we see is we had here 6,600. We know that was to derivative exchanges. Then we had here 3,000 Bitcoins. Let us check. September 29th, 8 p.m. September 29th, 8 p.m. We received an inflow of 3,400 Bitcoins. And they had a fund flow at the same time of 3,070 Bitcoins. What a coincidence. Here another 1,770 Bitcoins. I guess that was related, or I'm not sure, to derivative exchanges. Because that's what they love to do. Uh, and right now just another 700 Bitcoin, so nothing, nothing big at least here, but also very interesting in my opinion, very, very interesting. Um, we can check a little bit more, well, um, interesting that spot activity or at least activity, trading activity on spot exchanges are lifting up while on futures it's just declining. Now that's really interesting. Um, oh, miners lifting up once again. Today, 2050 Bitcoins outflow. Also interesting. And if we check, oh, OTCs. I'm not sure. No, OTCs. And that's, look what Bitfinex did here. That's really interesting. But they had a bigger fund flow, so they sent Bitcoins to exchanges, it seems, or something. Uh, maybe usually when it goes up then, in my opinion, the question is, did they buy the last dip? Because that's where, you know, when it dumped before it went up and then start to sell, that's possible. But look. And that's something that's not really common if you see OTC activity at the same time like centralized exchanges activity. That's really interesting. And then usually it looks something like this here. You know, you have less OTC activity but then centralized exchange activity and then when central exchange activity is low you will have a bigger OTC activity but also here happened for example that's very interesting I should spend a little bit more time with this chart here yeah that's it let us go forward so that doesn't look bullish at all look what Coinbase is doing a lot of sell orders waiting there while here nothing just nothing nothing it starts here once again at 19k so it looks like they are holding the price to let it fall at 19k afterwards hmm i don't like it all i don't like it so i'm bringing a little bit more money to my short because I really don't like that. We need to see. Uh, I think a little bit more. Give me here. Yeah, that's that's good. So mm, I don't like that. Looks like Coinbase want to push the price back to 19k. Nothing changed. A little bit more liquidity here and here at 74 and that's it so absolutely nothing big there a bit also similar looking we have a 19.3 and 18.6 so also interesting they absorb the cell order here Bitstamp. Wow, Bitstamp. At 20,500, 20,400. Well, we remember from yesterday, right now at 19k waiting. And here for them, 
below of 18k is where the whole thing starts. They removed a lot of sell orders and instead they shifted to the downside. It seems not expecting any big thing. So let us go forward. Binance. Also here, look what they are doing. Look what we have here on sell orders. Look all that. Wow. Also here at 19k. Removed liquidity there. Introduced more liquidity here. Removed liquidity here. So. And a lot of liquidity here. Really a lot. So. Yeah. If they want to push very hard to the downside. Of course they will absorb all this. Or at least trigger all these. But it's it's crazy. It's in my opinion really crazy what they are doing. Locking their liquidity. Why they're for example. They didn't absorb this um, sell order. They just removed the sell order before. But still too many liquidity. So bulls need to be brave and to push up hard. Otherwise it's going to fail. And to be honest. I mean it's it hurts to say. But Bitcoin is only 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 making anything. Or yeah anything. If SPY is front running. I mean we did we had today a situation where I was really a little bit surprised when I have seen that Bitcoin was pushing 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 why SPY and SPX not following and I had a little bit of of hope and then they flipped immediately afterwards so also here liquidity between 99 and 20,150 right now they are just maintaining the price so a lot of buy orders here as you see um, so it's a little bit I guess it's also because of um, SPY, DXY and so on and so forth yeah so we need to see but also here nothing big they brought some liquidity here at 18k but that's it you see that here but nothing big i i remember last year at 29k they we had their huge walls not happening ftx perp short position at 20300 a big one we were close to trigger them, but they missed. A lot of liquidity here. Still a lot of liquidity here. Pfft. They removed or reduced the liquidity at 17.7 at least. And shifted a little bit more up to 18.4. But still limiting there, so at 20,200. Kraken spot removed liquidity at 18k and also shifting a little bit more to the upside but nothing big no nothing big they absorb their sell order here another sell order here but also here nothing big bitmax nothing absolutely Nothing. They also removed the sell orders here to the upside. Yeah. Binance Futures. Let us see what's happening here. Wow. Binance Futures. Look that. <laughs> yeah. Let's go up. Come on. Let us trigger all these short orders. Wow. That's that's I don't know what Binance is playing to be honest they removed everything here all the liquidity what what what's happening did I miss something they removed the sell orders here they removed the liquidity here and now open until 8k uh hello 
Why are you doing that? Removed liquidity at 18.1. Uh, Bitfinex derivatives is doing exactly the same. No, 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 no. And waiting here at eighteen thousand one hundred. OKEX futures. Okay, we triggered their short orders at 20k. And that's it. FTX bot. Nothing. At the moment, waiting there, trying to limit the way down at 19.5. We they are reduced liquidity below of twenty twelve K and now bring up to fifteen four and so on and so forth. This area here is the most interesting. Fifteen four sixteen eight. Uh, also having this kind of pattern on the other side, but the only one that's in my interest is that here. Because, you know, you have here one wall, here one wall, here one wall, but also on the other side. That's, I guess, some algo things. So, yeah, that's it. Let us talk about my personal conclusion. 